Now we're going to focus on nuclear reactions, and the objective today is to be able to write nuclear equations. So radioactivity was discovered by Henri Becquerel and his assistants Marie and Pierre Curie. They had a photographic plate that developed on its own. They figured out that uranium was giving off energy to develop the film. The uranium was radioactive. There are three types of radiation that we're going to focus on. The first is alpha radiation. It is abbreviated with this Greek letter, letter A for alpha. And the symbol of an alpha particle is a 4 over 2 helium. 4 is the mass number, 2 is the atomic number, and helium is the symbol. A helium nucleus with a plus 2 charge has 2 protons and 2 neutrons, and it can be blocked by paper. Smoke detectors commonly emit alpha particles in order to detect smoke during a fire. The second type is beta radiation. So beta is abbreviated with this Greek letter B for beta. And then the symbol of the beta particle is a 0 over negative 1 E for electron. It has 0 mass and atomic number of negative 1 and E for electron. A high speed electron emitted from radioactive unstable nuclei. It can be blocked by wood or a thin sheet of metal like aluminum. And tritium is used as a tracer in research in some glow in the dark paints and is a beta emitter. The third type is gamma radiation, and so this is the Greek symbol for gamma, and down here would be a gamma particle where it has zero mass and a zero atomic number, and then this is the symbol for gamma once again. It's just high energy x-rays, and it can be blocked by really thick lead or really thick concrete. So technetium used in nuclear medicine is a gamma emitter. Technetium decays so quickly that it is no longer present in the Earth's crust. So the penetrating power can be seen here where alpha particles are so massive that they can't even make it through paper, which means they cannot get through your skin, nor metal or concrete or even water. A beta particle can go through paper and it could go through your skin, but it is stopped by wood or a thin sheet of metal. Um, and we're not going to worry about the neutron. Gamma radiation is high energy, has no mass. So like a ghost, it can just about go through everything. Really thick concrete can kind of slow it down. Um, and then really thick lead can help to stop it as well. So what's more dangerous outside of your body? Alpha, beta, or gamma radiation? And why? Gamma radiation is most dangerous from outside of your body because it's just high energy that can go through your body and cook your insides like a microwave. Um, the longer the exposure, the more dangerous it is. What's more dangerous if you swallow it? And that would be alpha radiation because alpha cannot get through your skin. If you were to swallow it, then it wouldn't be able to escape your body and it would be trapped inside and it would be playing ping pong with your insides causing you know cancer to occur. So let's see an example of alpha decay. Here, you're gonna see the two protons and two neutrons. When I press play, the uranium is going to emit this alpha particle as well as energy. And then we are left with, so here we emitted a 4 over 2 helium. And what's left over is something with a mass less 4. So now it's instead of 238, it has a mass of 234. And my atomic number is now dropped by 2. So instead of 92, now it's 90. Notice the equation can be written in reverse over here on the right side of the arrow. So these, the order doesn't matter as long as these are both on the product side of the arrow. Another example would be for beta decay, where we're going to take a neutron, and it's going to turn into a proton and an electron. The proton is going to stay behind, and you'll see an electron and gamma radiation emitted. So let's watch that. Here is your neutron. It turns into a proton, we emit gamma radiation, and there goes the electron. So in this equation, we are emitting a 0 over negative 1 electron. Notice that the mass is not going to change, so the mass remains the same. And then my atomic number, strangely, because we now have another proton after the fact, my atomic number goes up by 1, leaving me with nitrogen. And remember, these two can be, doesn't matter what order they're in, after the arrow on the product side. 
We're not going to really worry about gamma radiation because it's literally just the gamma energy being given off. It doesn't actually change your parent particle into anything new. So examples of nuclear equations are written like this. We have a 238 mass over 92 atomic number, that's uranium, and to go through alpha decay, it's going to emit an alpha particle, which is a 4 over 2 helium, and then notice that the mass has to decrease by 4, so instead of 238, now it's 234, and the atomic number is going to decrease by 2 and then become 90. I want you to also notice that the balance of your reactants and your products must be equal. Mass of reactants must equal mass of products. So here's the mass before the arrow, 238, and if you combine the total mass after the arrow on the product side, those also must equal 238. Writing with my mouse, sorry it's so messy. So your mass before, total mass before and total mass after have to be equal, and your total atomic number before and your total atomic number after also have to be equal. So notice that before the arrow it's 92 and then after the arrow we have 2 plus 90 which equals 92 to balance out the atomic numbers as well. So same thing below, this is a beta decay where we have a 234 over 90 thorium. We're going to emit a beta particle which is a 0 over negative 1 electron and so remember, if this is 234, then these two numbers combined also must equal 234, which they do. And then on the left side, my atomic number is 90, which means that these two numbers together have to equal 90, which 91 minus 1 does equal 90. Now you're going to try to write some alpha decay equations. I'm going to show you the first one, then I want you to pause the video and try the next two. So this is going to undergo an alpha decay. The symbol over the arrow is the alpha symbol to let you know it's an alpha decay. When we have an alpha decay, we emit an alpha particle, which is a 4 over 2 helium. Plus, we have to figure out what is the other particle. So remember, the mass is decreasing by 4, so instead of 240 minus the 4, I'm going to have 236. And the atomic number is going to decrease by 2 and go from 94 to 92. Now we go look up this atomic number on a periodic table. And when we look down here at the bottom, element number 92 is uranium. So we're going to put the symbol U for uranium right here. So now I want you to pause the video and try the next two examples and then unpause the video to see the answers. Here are the correct answers. So remember, it doesn't matter what order these are in on the right side of the arrow. They are both alpha decays, so you should have a 4 over 2 helium written for both of them. And then remember that the masses on the right side have to add up to equal the mass on the left, and the atomic numbers on the right side have to add up to equal the atomic number on the left. So you can check your answers here for the alpha decay examples you just did. Now let's look at a beta decay. This is indicating that a beta decay is occurring, which means we're going to emit a beta particle, which is a 0 over negative 1 electron. Now that we've written our beta particle, we want to know what's it going to change into. So plus, what's the new particle going to be? Notice that the mass does not change, so my mass is going to be 240. And then the atomic number should go up by 1, so instead of 94, it should be 95. We're going to go look up atomic number 95 on the periodic table. Here is atomic number 95, and so that is AM or americium. So we'll write the symbol here, AM. Notice that the numbers at the top on the left, 240, match the total combined numbers on the right side. 0 plus 240 is also equal to 240. And then on the bottom, 94, Notice over here, negative 1 and 95 also equal 94, so this equation is balanced. So now you pause the video and write the beta particle and the new particle after the beta decay for these two examples, and then unpause the video to check your answers. Here are the correct answers to the two beta decays that you should have written. Here are your beta particles. Remember, these don't have to be in the same order on the right side of the arrow. They just have to be on the right side of the arrow. And then we have 254 over 101 Mendelavium and 228 over 90 Thorium as your final answers.
Okay, so learning check, complete the following nuclear equations. If this cobalt undergoes a beta decay, what's the new particle? The mass is not going to change. That's going to stay 60. It's a beta decay, so my atomic number is going to go up from 27 to 28. And then when I look on the periodic table, element number 28 is nickel. Nickel here and done. This one says zinc 71 decays by beta emission. So first we're going to write the symbol for zinc. 71 is the mass number which goes at the top left corner and then we need to go to the periodic table to get the atomic number of zinc. Here is zinc and it has an atomic number of 30 and now yields it's a beta emission so that means it's going to emit a beta particle 0 over negative 1 E for electron and then we have to figure out what's the other new particle going to be. Remember that the mass does not change in a beta decay and the atomic number goes up by one. And so we're going to look at the periodic table. What's our new element? So element 31 is gallium. Okay, uranium 234 decays by alpha emission. So I'm going to put the symbol for uranium, which is U. It's mass at the top left corner, 234. And then I'm going to go find uranium on the periodic table. It is, down, it is down here at the bottom. There's uranium. It has an atomic number of 92. So that goes here. And since it's going to go through an alpha decay, we're going to write the arrow. It's going to emit an alpha particle, which is a plus. And then our new particle has a mass that has decreased by 4, so this will be 230. And then the atomic number decreases by 2, so instead of 92, now it's going to be 90. And then we go find element number 90 on the periodic table, which is thorium, TH. So if we know that mass is conserved before and after a reaction, then we know that the total mass between this mass and this mass have to equal this mass plus this mass. So these equal 239. And so 238 plus what is going to equal 239? And that is going to be a 1. So this has to be 239 equal on both sides. And now at the bottom over here, 93 and negative 1 equals 92. So that means that this number and this number have to both equal 92. So that makes this a 0. And this is the symbol for a neutron. If I were to balance this equation, 246 plus 12, that's going to be a total of 8. And at the bottom, 96 plus 6 is a total of, so over here, we should have, this is 4, 4 times 1 equals 4, um, and 4 plus what is going to equal 258, and that's going to have to be 254. So my top number is 254 here, and then my bottom numbers should equal 102, and this is 4 times 0 is 0, so that means that this bottom number is going to have to be 102. And then we go look at the periodic table for 102, and that is NO, nobelium. Okay, here are the answers to the last two questions. In 10 words or less, describe the difference between capturing and emitting a nuclear particle. Captured particles combine with the nucleus. Emitted particles are released from the nucleus. And in a nuclear equation, where would an emitted particle be written or a captured particle? If it's captured, it's going to be before the arrow. And if it's emitted, it would be after the arrow. So now you have some practice on alpha and beta decay on Canvas.